Welcome back to the Audiobook Reader. I'm Kimberly, and today we're going to go over some of my favorite books of 2020. So stick around. Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, uh, thanks for stopping by. If you've watched my last two videos or any one of them, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about my favorite books of 2020. I tried to narrow it down to 10 and I failed, but I got it down to 11. And um, so we're just going to go over those books tonight and drink some tea. I got a cozy blanket and on the comfy couch. And uh, let's just go over some books. Dog barking, can't help it. Take some notes. So in 2020, I had no clue that I would be starting a booktube channel in 2021. So when I was listening to the books, there wasn't any, I need to think about what I'm going to say about them uh, while I was listening to them. And same thing with the narrators of the books. I wasn't thinking about what I wanted to be able to say that I liked or disliked about them. Okay, so we're going to start with book one out of the 11 books in no particular order, and we have Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Avacito, and narrated by both herself and Melalina Luisa Morte. Um, I very much enjoyed this book. I loved the perspective of the two different girls. Uh, the story is following two sisters who find out that they're sisters after their father dies in a plane crash. One of the girls live in New York, the other girl lives in Puerto Rico, and so not only are they having to deal with the fact that they both lost their father, but they're also learning about each other's cultures and also learning that their father had two families. I enjoyed listening to the girls learning about each other cultures. Um, and it was, it was just well written in my opinion, and I, I enjoyed the story. Let's go on to book number two, and this is the Rose Garden by Susanna um, Kinsley. Um, this is narrated by Nicola Barber, and I loved the story. Um, if you listen to my newbie book tag, you know that I love time travel stories and this story definitely had some time travel. So we're following a girl um, named Ava and she ends up going back to a childhood place I think in Ireland. I could be wrong with uh, wrong about that. Ireland or Scotland. Anyways, she goes back after her sister passes away to spread her sister's ashes. And while she's back in this childhood town that she grew up in, um, during summer times and things like that, she ends up finding herself slipping back into time. And she kind of goes back from um, back into time and back into the future, back and forth. And when she's back in time, she meets a guy named Daniel and she starts to fall for him. And basically the rest of the book is her, one, figuring out why she's slipping back in time. And two, deciding whether or not being in the future is where she really wants to be or if she wants to be in the past with Daniel. And the way that the story was narrated and the language of the book, um, there was just some beautiful details uh, to both time periods. Um, there was, of course, with any time travel, there's just a little bit of like push the believe button and go with it. Um, but the, I loved the very end, how the, the little twist that um, happened and um, how all of the uh, characters' lives intersected. If there's time travel in it, I'm pretty much going to like it. Uh, whether or not I think it's a five-star read or not, that's something a little bit different, but it, I, thought, I just it was beautiful. <laughs> so, um, their narration was great. Um, the narrator is not someone that I've heard a lot from before, and again, since I wasn't really listening to it in the sense to be able to talk about it, I don't have much to say about it except for the fact that her narration did not distract from the story for me. I definitely got very immersed into the story and felt like I was in both time periods. Okay, sorry. The, uh camera stopped recording. Okay, so book number three, we have The Gollum and the Genie, and this 
um, is by Helen Recker, and this book was um, picked by someone in my book club, and I had never heard of it before, and was super glad that they picked it, uh, because I very, very much enjoyed the story. And the narrator for this book is George um, Goodall, and sorry if I pronounced the names wrong, but he um, is one of my favorite narrators. Uh, it's like listening to an older grandfather tell you a story, except for he also does amazing voice impressionations. So he's not just telling the story, like you feel like you're listening to several different characters with just the one narrator. So in this book, we're following Sheva, who is a very lifelong life-like golem who finds herself in New York City, 1899, and she's learning how to fit in as a human. Then we're also following a story of a genie who ends up being freed from a lamp, and he um, has been stuck in there for centuries. So he's learning about this whole new modern world <laughs> in 1899, and the two of their lives um, end up crossing paths. And there's no love story between the two. It's just them learning about each other's cultures, and there's a little bit of a mystery of, you know, who trapped the genie, things like that. Um, but I very much enjoyed it because I loved reading the different cultures and again the narrator did such a wonderful job with the different accents that you would like i forgot i was listening to the same guy okay so book number four very different than what i've already talked about and this is the flat chair by beth o'leary and it is narrated by carrie hope fletcher and who uh fortune again sorry if i butcher the name in the story it's um this is a contemporary romance and Tiffany finds herself in need of finding a an apartment or a flat and she answers um, a ad for a guy who needs someone to share a flat but he works nights and she can be there during the night and he'd be there during the day so basically they're sharing a flat uh, they're sharing a bed <laughs> and they end up getting to know each other by leaving notes um, throughout the house every day and I just I loved it it's just something sweet it's um, and I loved the fact of them getting to know each other through notes now to get just so there's a little bit backstory my husband and I we actually we met in person but shortly after we met he joined the Navy and this um, and went away and so a lot of our communications for the first year was through um, written letters and through emails and that's really how we got to know each other so I think part of my love for this book so much is just seeing two people starting to really get to know each other through notes um, so with that said it was one of my favorite stories. I'll probably listen to it again when I need a little pick-me-up. Um, both the narrators did a great job. Um, I have not heard them before, and they did definitely did not distract from the book. Book number five, <laughs> again, very, very different than book number four. And this was Rising Out of Hatred in An Awakening of a Former White Nationalist. And this was by Eli Stauslow and narrated by Scott Brick. I read this book back in uh, April or the very beginning of May. And I, um, it was a book club pick for us again. And I'm so glad that I read it when I did. I knew that there was racism in our country. Um, I, I knew that, um, but I just, I never realized just how deep it went in the country. And this book really was just an awakening for me to realize, so the story follows Derek Black, and he grows up in the center of a white nationalism um, where his dad was the founder of Stormfront, which is um, was is one of the largest racist communities in on the internet, and it's his story of realizing just 
how wrong his family is. And it takes him a while <laughs> to realize this. But I think that what really just got me was that he was born after me. Like, he, he was born in 1989. And the fact that he was so involved in this in 1989, like, being born 1989 was just mind-blowing to me that this was still happening. And then um, when, you know, George Floyd was murdered, it just, it made me realize how and why that is happening. <laughs> so um, it was a timely story for me to read. Um, I do highly recommend it for anyone to take a, a to, to read this book. Um, it was it was a hard read uh, just to realize that that just how much this is going on still. Um, I mean I know it but anyways I don't know how to say it. It was I'm glad that this book came into my life. Okay, back again, camera, the camera automatically stops. I, it's a little frustrating, but it's okay. We're learning this, we're in this together. Okay, book six, um, a very different genre than the other ones that we talked about. This one's a historical fiction that takes place during World War II. We have dual timelines. Um, it's The Things We Cannot Say by Kelly Reamer, um, narrated by Anne-Marie Gildon and Nancy Preston. And here we're following the story of Elena, who is in 1942 Poland, and her story of the guy that she loves and what happens to them, um, how she gets out, out of um, Poland, and um, I would definitely recommend that if you are a lover of World War II historical fiction books, you must, this is a must read. It made me laugh, it made me cry. Um, I loved, it was just a sweet story. Book number seven uh, was Garden Spells by Sarah Addison Allen, and this was read by Susan Erickson. Um, I have not heard a lot from Susan Erickson before. Uh, she definitely reads very slowly, and I for sure had to speed it up. But I still very, very much enjoyed the story. Um, sorry, dogs. Um, but I very much still enjoyed the story. Uh, so, and I didn't really pay attention to the narrator. All I'm going to say about Garden Spells is if you like the movie Practical Magic, you'll love this book, Garden Spells. I love the movie Practical Magic and hated the book. <laughs> I actually feel that Garden Spells follows the movie more closely than the actual book. So we're just going to leave it there. Um, you know, there's two sisters, Clara and Sydney, and uh, Sydney comes home, and yeah, it's, it's great. There's just a little bit of magic, and um, it's a lovely little story. Book number eight, this is probably, well, all of these are like my favorite books of the year, but um, the Dream Daughter by Diane Chamberlain, and this was narrated by Susan Bennett, who, again, was another very slow reader, so I definitely sped it up. She didn't do anything for the story that, like, made me love the story more, but she also didn't distract from the story, um, so definitely not one of my most favorite narrators, but, um... I loved the story anyways. This story starts off taking place in 1970 and we're following Caroline and we find out that she is her um, she's pregnant um, and her husband has died or is um, missing has been missing from Vietnam and so now she's going to have to have this baby without him and then she finds out that the baby has a heart conditioning and probably won't and is not going to live her brother-in-law hunter then says hey trust me and I can help you make your help your baby live so there we are um, it's a really fun story I don't want to go too much more into it because it can give some spoiler alerts but um, definitely definitely loved it now this was the second book that I read from Diane Chamberlain um, the first book I think was pretending to dance and I liked it but um, it wasn't anything that I 
I can't really remember much about it. Um, but this book, um, from what I've heard, this, uh, this is a bit different compared to other books that Diane has written. Um, and this is definitely one that I'll be re-listening to um, in the future. Okay, book number nine, we're gonna take it back to 1938 and we're going to, um, I listened to Rebecca, uh, so it was a classic that I can't believe I've never listened to. This is by um, Daphne de Mori, uh, Moria, and it was read by Anna Masley. And uh, you start off with a, that first line. Last night I dreamt I went to Mandalay again. It's a great line. Um, this book, if you would not have told me this book was written in 1938, I would not have believed you um, by listening to it. There's no way I would have guessed that this book was written in 1938. Um, it's a mystery and it's definitely ahead of its time and um, I loved it. It was, I'm so glad, I can't believe I had never listened to it or read it before. So, um, and I think there's an adapt, there, well there's a movie out that was like a long time ago but I think there might be another one coming out again. Anyways, um, if you want to dip your toes into a classic and are nervous about it, I would say Rebecca is definitely a good place to start. Book number 10. Uh, this again was another book club book um, pick. So I have, um, there's, let's see, one, two, at least four. Yeah, there were four books on my 11 books here that I found out because of book club. But anyways, The Girl Who Came Home by Hazel Gaynor, and this was narrated by Connor Kelly Eating and Elena Kerr Collins. Um, I haven't really heard them, either one of those um, narrators before. Again, they did a great job, um, did not distract from the book, and I definitely were... Uh, was definitely immersed into the story. Now this story is um, a Titanic story so spoiler alert or not, um, <laughs> the ship sinks. So I had a hard time, I didn't really, I kind of went into this book kicking and screaming a little bit because I was like I don't want a sad story and I know the boat's gonna sink and I know there's gonna be a lot of sadness and um, I just didn't want that, but because it was a book club book, I went ahead and went through it, and I really enjoyed it. Yes, there are some sad parts, but um, let's see. We are following the story of Maggie Murphy, and she is, it's 1912, and she lives in Ireland, and she is moving to America with her aunt or cousin, something like that and she has to leave behind her boyfriend um, and she's very sad about that and when she, after everything happens with the Titanic she ends up in New York City and decides that she's never going to talk about um, that horrible night again. Uh, this is a dual timeline so we are also in 1982 and then we're following um, Maggie's great granddaughter Grace and Grace is a journalist and ends up finding out about Maggie's story and um, has Maggie tell her the story and so we go back and forth between um, 1982 and Maggie telling her great granddaughter the story and then being back on the ship. So I would say if you want a Titanic story um, and you want one that's still, while sad, still has like a really sweet story to it and a little heartwarming, um, I would definitely recommend this book. And now book number 11, again, <laughs> another book club pick. Uh, this one we read in January and we picked this book because we wanted just something sweet, fun, and short and it 
checked all the boxes. So what we read was about my mother, true stories of a horse crazy daughter and her baseball obsessed mother. And this is by Peggy Rowe. Um, this is Mike Rowe's mother and she narrates her own, um, the own, her own book. It's pretty short, but it's hilarious. Um, she just tells little stories about when she's growing up and, um, so this, she lives in Maryland and I grew up in Maryland and her mother is a um, Orioles fan, baseball fan, and I too am a huge Orioles baseball fan. I am also a huge Cardinals fan um, and then Indians because now, but anyways, I digress. Um, so uh, the things that her mother does as a baseball fan and then just some of the stories, it cracked me up. Um, little did we know back in January just how much we needed, how much we were going to need some of these like fun light moments. And this one throughout the year, I just would think back to it and have little chuckles. Um, she did a great job narrating her own book. Uh, you know, most, I think a lot of times when people are telling their own stories, they do a nice job. Um, Micro does a little narrate, a uh, beginning, uh, uh, about his mom and you know, that was also fun and sweet. So those are my 11 books of 2020 that I very much enjoyed. So we kind of were all over the place. We had a couple of nonfictions. We had a biography. Uh, we had a couple of historical fictions. Um, we had some sci-fi with some t um, time travel. Uh, we had um, some books that really made me think. Um, and yeah, we had books that made me laugh. We had books that made me cry. Okay, camera stopped again. <laughs> so I'm back. Uh, so those were the books of 2020 that I very much enjoyed. And uh, please comment below if any of the books you've listened to or read and if you really enjoyed them or if you didn't like about them. I very much will look forward to talking in the comment section to you about these books. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I will see you next time.